Breaking down the Penn State offense, we got uh, Marty and we got Tim on the line from Black Shoe Diaries as we typically lean on for Penn State football uh, coverage and analysis. Uh, you know, it's been 10 plus years now since sanctions hit the program and there was the long road back uh, that was shortened certainly by Bill O'Brien, but that's a discussion we've had at various times, but just as I look at various units across both sides of the, the field, there has always been at least a good unit, if not elite unit in all of those areas, uh, except the one unit that's kind of lagged behind and always been a, a discussion piece here. Anytime I've had you guys on to talk about the, the prospects of the next season, it seemed to be offensive line, that the offensive line wasn't where it needed to be for this team to go where it wanted to go. Uh, do we think we finally arrived at a place where the offensive line could uh, hold its own and, and be one of the top units in the Big Ten? I definitely think we have. Um, this offensive line last year took a massive step forward. That's a huge, huge tip of the cap to the players as well as Phil Troutwine. Um, by the end of the year, you were down, what, I think at least three starters, um, had a true freshman, a left tackle. And, yeah, the competition outside of Utah wasn't the best, but the line held it together. And in past years, Penn State struggled to form a legitimate two deep, let alone something like that. So, you know, you go into this year, you lose Drew Scruggs, who was your starting center and who was very good. But most importantly, you bring back Olo Fashanu, who might be the first offensive tackle off the board in, in next spring's NFL draft. Um, and in addition to Fashanu, I believe you bring back one, well, I mean, two, three, I think six guys, I want to say, who have started at least five games in their career and like seven or eight guys who have started at least one game. Um, that's a lot of experience on the offensive line. That's a lot of quality depth. And this uh, recruiting class they just signed, they brought in a pair of five stars in Alex Birchmeyer and Javen Williams, both of which who are early enrollees are already on campus. And Birchmeyer is one who seems to really be turning a lot of heads in a hurry. So, I mean, not that you're going to want to throw him to fire, but it just seems like another body that you definitely could put into that too deep and feel comfortable putting on the field if you need to. So, I mean, I, I think of Penn State offensive lines, I think this is the best offensive line since probably at least 2012. Um, maybe 2013 and it's just, yeah, it's exciting. Cause for so many years under James Franklin, even when everything else was clicking, like you said, Mark seemed like that offensive line would always hold them back. There would be so many games where the offense would be cruising along and all of a sudden the line would struggle and stall things out in your offensive game plan would go sideways. And you'd have Trace McSorley or Sean Clifford, or whoever it is running for their life or Barkley or journey Brown or whoever might be getting met in the backfield. And, it seems like those days are behind us, knock on wood. Um, honestly, I think last year that might have been one of my favorite parts of the season was watching this offensive line come together down the stretch and just maul people, especially when it was a lot of backups in there. So, yeah, it gives you a lot of a lot of optimism and excitement. And one other thing with the offensive line that I think is super encouraging as well, it's so hard to find true offensive tackles Penn State has three legitimate NFL offensive tackles, where in addition to Olu Fashanu, you have Drew Shelton, who last year as a true freshman did not look like a true freshman, and Caden Wallace, who missed, I think, the last like five or six games of last season with injury, but is going into his redshirt senior year and has made, I think, like 30 or 35 career starts at right tackle. So you've got a lot of options at tackle, too, which is great because, I mean, I think it's, if you're watching this show, you're probably enough of a college football or football fan in general to understand offensive tackle is much more difficult to play at a high level than offensive guard. And when you've got three guys who can do that at offensive tackle, that gives you a lot of wiggle room and a lot of cushion and just really raises the floor and the ceiling of your offense. Yeah, I mean, I would just echo what Marty was saying, and I kind of meant, alluded to it earlier when I was talking about, you know, Drew Hours expectations and how he's going to be helped by having such a quality veteran offensive line. Um, and to, as far as two deep goes, uh, you know, another name uh, I got to keep an eye on is Vega, Vega Iowani. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering his name, uh, 
guy they recruit. He was a late recruit in the 22 class out of uh, Washington State. Um, but he's he's not like a guy who's ready to put his stamp on the on the depth chart. He you know won't be starting, but I think he's a guy who could potentially work his way into the rotation and just again. And as I saw last year, probably going to have a couple guys that are going to go down throughout the course of the year and, you know, next man up. And we saw how successful it was last season. And despite losing a few guys, they were still able to, you know, get that push to, you know, create holes for the running backs and to keep Sean Clifford from having to run for his life constantly. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with Marty. This, this is the most optimistic I've felt about the offensive line and, over a decade and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful they'll do some really nice things in 2023.